in a single game elimination series, Divine DFP took on Koinu and lost. So it's not going to be a rematch. Someone fresh, someone new is coming through. It is the Japanese lad representing from the East going up against the beast that is Matisse. Let's get to it. What a way to start this off as Matisse really started to turn around that last series in the upper bracket with the Roos on the high view. He'll be playing in the green. Meanwhile, on the other side, Koinu, something a little bit closer to home in RL. He's going to be playing as the Chinese to open this one up. A fabulous purple, I must say. Well, just to confirm, people, this is a best of three, by the way. This Grand Finals has potentially got three games in it. Opening up. They have what is usually seen as a home map for the Roots. But I'm curious to see how Matisse is going to approach this game up against Koinu. Because when we saw the match up against Divine DFP, a lot of what Matisse done doesn't necessarily work against someone who's more present on the map. There's an argument that maybe what he done in that game won't necessarily just work against the Chinese. I want to see if Matisse feels a necessity to be aggressive up against the Civ that to typically and traditionally has always just been about greed. That greed, which by the way, has been nerfed. Remember, they made some drastic changes. I know when I say the numbers, you're going to be like, that's not drastic, that's small, but it is actually drastic to the early game and it can hurt the Chinese. For a start, you see this beautiful building being built right here. These villages, as well as the Barbican, no longer garrison 10 villages successfully. They can only hold eight now. That's actually a pretty heavy nerf to the safety when you try to heavy boom on a wood line or a gold source. And the other detail is that Song Dynasty no longer melts my brain in confusion trying to like dissect it. I used to always talk about how this person is at 1.25 TCs effective or whatever. That is now more accurate. It used to be you reduced with Song Dynasty your, your villager production time to 13 seconds. Now you only reduce it to 15 seconds, which is quite a substantial difference here. So, let's see if he actually wants to play in that. I think we are still going to see the Song Dynasty, by the way. I think it's just too advantageous in a lot of maps. The Barbican naturally allows you to grab something you otherwise wouldn't. And I'm looking at the spawn right now. And one thing we easily could see Coiny move towards is this boar on the south side. Actually, a Barbican drop right here between the gold and the boar would go a long way to securing the mid game for Coiny. want to see if Matisse IDs this early on and tries to maybe go for an early night play to block it. Because what we're probably going to see to open up at least is an Imperial Academy build from Koinu. Most Chinese players do go for the Imperial Academy first and then come back for the Barbican afterwards. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Unless you're up against a very strict timing, like a French knight run, uh, you feel like you can get away with Imperial Academy first and then Barbican essentially becomes a flexi option when you realize what you need and what's hard to reach, right? You see what your opponent does and you're essentially able to drop a Barbican as more of a reactionary element to your game. Golden Gate is going to be the choice for Matisse. No discount Barbican coming out from this side. I don't think we're ever going to see that. I've seen one or two players running the, the Kremlin. Does anyone in the, who's been seeing Kremlin from pros or streamers want to type in who they've seen it from? I wonder if we all have the same answer. There is one sausage man I've seen doing Kremlin on pub ladders at the moment. Hasn't been working out too well for him, though. Kremlin rush. I don't think we're going to get the Kremlin rush. Kremlin rushes work for the gremlins. Yeah, there you go. Some people come with Salami. Salami, of course, we've seen him try to do the Kremlin. It didn't work too well, even on maps like Wetlands. Kremlin makes sense if you're up against hyper-aggressive openings and you need space, right? You're trying to be greedy and your opponent can't. That's when it makes sense. It just The awkward part, I think, for the Roost a lot of the time is there's not many matchups where it feels like your opponent can't be greedy as well. Right? I know we just saw the Divine DFP one where <laughs> Matisse was able to be more greedy in a smart way, but that's the key detail, a smart way. He came out. Kremlin is you saying, I can't come out. You're coming into my base and I need breathing room. Even then, like just build on just build on Wooden Fortress instead. Just have more people on wood, get the Wooden Fortress and get a similar effect. Golden Gate will give you longevity every day of the week. So we are getting Imperial Academy first from Koinu. Notice he only has one person building this up, which is still incredibly effective. Remember that the Chinese build structures much quicker than other civs. And this allows him to bolster his food and gold in the meantime to enable quick timing on the Barbican also. So a lot of people asking whether they think Koinu or Matisse is favored. I feel like I would actually lean to, uh, towards Koinu. 
So one thing for me is like I don't necessarily think Matisse has been getting as much competitive exposure. I also don't think he's necessarily been as active as Koinu in the last month or so. Koinu, on the other hand, has regularly for a long time been scrimming with the likes of B, right? Being Garnaf come to mind, like in the road to wall and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then you think about the fact that they gave, I believe he was trying to compete in the uh, team tournament. He was actually grinding like crazy last month with not Akon. I don't believe Matisse was grinding as much in the last month. A bunch of solos, but like not in a competitive environment. So in terms of who got exposure to, with competitive settings in mind to high level players, I'd give an edge to Koinu. And that type of thing can rub off. You know, the, the way you get better at something is by getting the crap kicked out of you by Beastie for 10 hours straight until you learn, right? <laughs> That's how our boy Core got into the top 30 once. That's how our boy Core got number one on the leaderboard before. Okay, actually, in fairness, that was that was Beastie changing his name to Core, But it still counts. And it was all because of the crotch stomping, which Beastie gave to him over and over again. I'm sure Core definitely wasn't screaming, yes, yes, that's the spot 24-7. Big shout out to Core. Miss the guy. So Matisse, he did go on the stone there. And is he buying? He's buying the tickets by the looks of it. No, wait. Oh, I'm an idiot. He's already burned. I was about to say, I was like, I was looking at the, I was looking at the stone outcrow. I was like, wait a second. It was blended in the natural green we couldn't see. So Matisse is going to go for that greedy play. Something that he'll feel he can get away with because he's up against the Chinese. But to be fair, the Chinese are a little bit more efficient in the way they get away with their greed. They are rushing for it. Nine people on here with the Imperial official as well. So he's going to get that supervisor rocking. I'm sure, and he will get a, a somewhat similar timing. And remember, the, the way this is going to work out is Koinu, because he got Song Dynasty already, he actually has an edge in terms of villager production. By the time he builds the TC, they should be neck and neck, but they won't be. Because remember, the TCs from the Chinese are more efficient. It takes them 15 seconds compared to 20 seconds. So 1.25 TC effective. Bringing it up to 2.5 shortly. Love to see where he's going to go with the secondary TC, actually. Considering both of them went for this type of TC opening, and there's no doubt about it, Koinu scouted this, right? Like, he has double scouts. Definitely saw it. He would have said it, saw it ahead of even having Song Dynasty quicker due to Tang Dynasty. I think Koinu could get away with a TC drop close to the ball. He might just opt for the deer. Yeah, it's going to be the deer play. So deer makes a lot more sense, right? Like, you know, the boar is going to fight about the deer or not. Uh, in terms of raw food quantities, there are more deer. There's more meat up here on the deer than there are where the boar is. Let's see, I'm just waiting for that last little bit of gold. Love the min-max, actually, from Koinu. Notice he's not wasting any time at all here. He moves out. He grabs the deer. He's going to get just enough stacked together. The stone's now going to get dropped off. And just shy of needing to run back, he's going to have time for his TC drop. And he actually goes for the berry plus deer patch. So this is interesting. Koinu doing this likely because he wants more tax generation. And that's what you get by dropping this TC on the berries compared to the deer. So wouldn't be surprised if we see a mill dropped here as well and then supervised to drop off uh, all the berries. The reason that's important is whenever you do deer, you go up to 25. When you do berries, you go up to 10 by default, um, which means that you get more taxation than you would off of deer. But admittedly, you get a much worse gathering rate. The logic behind this, by the way, is that Koinu just wants to minimize his gold workers, right? Most of his people at home are going to be essentially like pseudo gold gatherers via stuff like this as you're seeing. Matisse, oh wow, he did go ultra greedy. He went for the free TC build. This first TC doesn't grab anything though. I, I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily outright against the idea of triple TC from Matisse. I do feel like this is way too condensed though. Like, if this TC was dropped over near the boar and the gold at the backside with the wood, man, this would be a great TC drop location. A bit risky because it's far away from your base, but you, know, you can even think about, like, deer over here with the, the wood lines. This TC doesn't secure anything additional. And it doesn't even give you a heads up because remember, the way the additional TCs work is they don't see into stealth for us. So the only reason you're seeing this right now is this scout. As it moves away, this doesn't even serve as an early warning to a raid into your base. And Koinu, of course, isn't going to try to raid him. But the, the reason I bring up like this detail is I think Matisse, if you think the, the walk distance, you know, even if he went up here instead, 
He gets gold. He, he gets the berries as well, right? And then he's closer to going for that boar afterwards. This, to me, doesn't get anything better than the north side TC in the same distance away. Let's see if we can do something with his raiders, though, because it's like we are going to get knights. I like this out of Matisse. He needs to try and do this before the walls go up. You're playing against Chinese. They don't want to be in feudal in this type of, of matchup, right? Like, if he tries to mass Chugin new, knights could be problematic, and there's going to be a lot of archers. Like, the, the Rus are one of the few civs that can kind of combat this Chugin new spam from the Chinese because their comp usually involves knights, and they have that 20% extra wood, which allows them to bolster their archer numbers quicker. So, I think it's better for Koinu to just rush for this cast late as he's doing right now. And yes, Incog is right. Usually you keep your TCs condensed because well, one, it's the taxation, but two, it's the fact that Chinese players don't like to build units early on. And if you want to go for aggro TCs, as in ones further out from your base, um, you need protection usually against raiders. But the reason why Koinu went for this more aggressively placed TC in terms of resource expansion is that he saw Matisse was doing a TC build. Matisse's TC build enabled Koinu to do this. If Koinu was playing against a typical Rus opener with archers and knights, he would stay right next to the base instead. Like, I'm always a big fan of spreading your TCs out. The importance is, like, you have to gauge how much you can get away with. So the reason I was picking away at Matisse's choice here compared to a TC up here is in the next five to ten minutes, he's going to have a lot of new villagers spawning out here in the center, and they are going to all have exploited the same resources quicker. It means you're going to add in a lot more idle time of villagers running to and fro, and they're also going to be further away from save points. Compare that to if Matisse had a TC up in the northern corner and one here with this, this, this starting one. These resources wouldn't drain as quickly, so it'd be safer. He'd also ensure he had less downtime, shifting new resources plus new villagers coming out and doing nothing. Meanwhile, same case up here, right? And I think Matisse, yeah, he's even moving up here now for the boar anyway, which he wanted. So a, a lot of what I'm saying makes sense when you think about all these added variables, especially when you consider he still ends up here anyway. And that's why I do like what Coin had done, because now he's very close to expanding gold. He gets the deer, he gets the berries. He doesn't have to worry about the idle time. Um, I would say this is even more important if you don't go for Wheelbarrow, but realistically, if you're going two free TCs, you're going to go Wheelbarrow anyway, right? So that detail doesn't usually add into the equation as much. And why can't Roos with free TC catch up to Chinese with two TC? Uh, he's slightly... Like, he kind of has, right? It's still... Wait, is it 1.25 TC effective? It's slight, is it still slightly higher than 1.25? I think it's 1.25 now. One point, oh, sorry, it's 1.33. Is it? Wait, no, it used to be... No, that's right. It used to be 1.5, right? So it's 1.33, you're correct. That's why. It's like... It's less than a third. That's why he's struggling to catch up. But now when he butchers a few villages, he'll be able to do so. Matisse going in with a raid. Ram is here as well. TC will need to be protected. Koinu, remember, he's trying to be a greedy boy. He reached up the car slaves. and Nestabees is out. Matisse being held back by a few lancers. Oh, it's the fake pump. Finally, the flurry will come out. So Matisse will have to retreat away. Takes out a few villages, but really not enough here. Yes, thank you, HKO. It used to be 1.54 TCs. Now it's 1.33. Always gets me confused. Matisse. Well, he's seeing the difference here. The fact that he's still behind in villages. Koinu up on him. Wouldn't be surprised there was maybe one TC idle from time to time as well. But after all that, I mean, that's a heavy investment. The Ram, the Knights, everything, and you're just behind. You can see what he wanted. If Matisse gets in there and takes out the town center, this is a very good trade to have allowed the Castle Age. Because then he can just fall back, castle himself, and he's got three TC versus one. And Koinu would have to go get more stone. Now this is really bad for him. Matisse is probably going to get forced to do something brash with a heavily injured army. And if he loses that, that's when the Lancers will ride out. And remember what we said about Matisse. You've got condensed eco in one location. This is the other bad thing about having a TC bundled together like this. All these villages are going to be in one location. And when a raid comes in, instead of me idling 10 or 20% of your economy, I'm going to idle 30 or 40%. And on top of that, there's not going to be enough safe points for all these villages in this area. Meanwhile, if you spread up villages here, 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 I raid in with my first group of lancers, I'm shutting down a quarter of your economy, and I'm only idling a quarter of it, right? And I can kill less because there's going to be more safe points. And I have to go looking for the rest. It's the bad side of shifting your, your attention economically piece to piece. 
So a little tip for people, because I, I think we had a game on the channel uh, the other week with Linok versus someone who had their name in Chinese, um, which I think they translated to boob or something. The mistake Boob was making, they, they were kind of being a boob about the way they balance their economy. They had like 20 villagers moving from berry bush to berry bush. And it just, it makes you a prime target. It also ensures you have more downtime of people moving to and fro locations, which can also throw off even high level players because instead of you gradually keeping a level of food incoming, you're essentially going from 100% to 0% as you hop between locations. Whereas if you have people go in this berry patch and people go in this berry patch at the same time, you know, you, you idle some, but like we're down to 50% at this point. And then we get back up to 100%. And we, we kind of, we hop, skip and jump our way through. And what that ensures is that you actually have resources in reserve if you need to do things like transitions or counters. If you have an all-in where you've extracted all the resources and then invested in units, then you have half a minute or so of downtime, you just can't produce a counter. So in a game that's all about counters, you've essentially put yourself behind. These knights, I'm not going to be happy when they learn what's been happening here. Walls up on the south side. Most of the walling done on the north side as well. So notice Koinu has created that funnel point. Lancers are also going to break through. And oh boy, Matisse. Did he even spot? He doesn't even know. Okay, all these villagers are dead. You came here to gather pig meat. We came here to slaughter you like pigs. Matisse will try to run away into the stealth forest. His only hope to escape. Spears are at least on the way. Good quick reaction actually from Matisse. That was brilliant there. He minimized casualties. He should have lost half of those at least. Instead, he only loses two. The coin will continue to wrap. And not Eminem style. Not McChicken style either. I'm talking the kind that a boa constrictor does. So he'll start to constrict the options that Matisse has. And Matisse, because he didn't get those walls up and he has a static army, will be Benny Hillsing for quite a bit of this. He's trying to prep for a stage fight in the center. I am worried about this, though. It, it, for me, it's the nest of bees. Even if the spring wants to try and counter, it's not going to be easy to kill these off. These are clock town nest of bees, after all. Heavy flurry in. Okay, that's a bad way to open for Matisse. Is he getting baited in? I don't know if that was auto aggro, but that's a bad fight again. Matisse, heavy losses for nothing gained. Still has to worry about the raids as well. Scouts have eyes on the deer gathering, so expect more knights to wrap around here. Now, Matisse is making an effort to pick up the relics at least. Koinu has ignored them. He's playing full corner camper. This guy, if he can't find his career as an AOE4 pro, he could always take it up as a Call of Duty pub stomper. That was a corner camper joke. Lance is also just keeping the cavalry battalion at bay. That's what's enabling him to just go down the center like this. Spirit also being prepped at the same pace as Matisse, so the counter is being countered. And notice that Koinu is not distracting himself with this, the flanks. He'll send a few lances here, but that's it. He doesn't need to do anything more. One of the big reasons is that Matisse has kind of exploited a lot of these outside resources. The boar is pretty much gone. The deer are pretty much gone. So everything is going to be in the center anyway when Matisse has to set up farms. So what Koinu is doing is he's prepping for a slightly later timing where he can just come in and full punch Matisse out of this game. It will come down to one big fight. And that's clearly what Koinu's goal was this entire time. Just mass spim into work as well. I mean, as long as the nest of these live, that's all that matters. Springle's moving in. They reach their target as well. Good strike there by Koinu. He jumps the gun and it pays off. Matisse. Losing his anti-siege. Might lose all of it. Koinu, remember, he has the edge here because these are clock tower Springles. Matisse in a lot of trouble. Now playing into the choke points. Worst case situation, by the way. These choke points, they not only limit your melee capability, they ensure the nest of these do maximum damage. They're doing that to the builders right now. TC. Is going to be taken out. Look at the plus side, Matisse. You're not going to be pushed into a funnel point. <laughs> because he's deleting all the buildings as he goes. Matisse is, however, pop cap right now. Or rather house, to be more accurate. Could make more if he built more houses. Koinu calms himself. I like this play. There's no rush now. He got rid of the TC. He knows that Matisse still needs to make a farm transition in the next minute or two. So Koinu can wait. That weighing comes bigger advantages for him. He's set up his farms already in mass. Night raids are going to be vanquished as well. And Koinu, it's going to be a double keep drop. So he'll probably drop the first castle near the sacred site, probably the north side. And then he'll pivot in and stick another one near the siege workshop. 
That's going to block out a huge chunk of Matisse's base. Very hard to stop as well. And people saying that, that Koine missed out on Relics. Yes and no. So the issue that he would have had around Relics is he had a few Lancers, but he didn't really have a standing army to go get the Relics. Matisse was always going to be better poised because he reaches up, he'll have the Warrior Monks, and he has several Knights, he has Spears, he has Scouting Vision around the map. So I don't necessarily blame Koinu for not going for those Relics. I think the upside would have been very expensive. He could get too easy. Like, there's one down here and then one over here, right? If I remember correctly. Yes, no. Like, the, the thing that people always forget is whenever you go for the, the Relic play, there is a cost. And it depends on your timings, your requirements. You have to build these Monasteries for 200 wood, and then you have to build the people who gather the relics for 150. And the thing you're sacrificing with the Chinese at that point is your quicker Nesta Bees timing. I think Nesta Bees are, are more important. The gold difference, I mean, sure, the gold difference is insane, but I'm more concerned with what's going to happen with the Detroit value. Because right now, I don't see Matisse having a way of getting to the Nesta Bees still. Oh, wow. Uh, no, that that is not how you get the Nesta Bees. <laughs> That's how you get to the afterlife. See, Matisse is making a pretty gluttonous choice here. He's not quite pop capped yet, but he's going in for the high armory. The upside, Koinu doesn't know. The downside, Koinu is now pressing around the sides. And instead, wow, I'm a little bit surprised by this. Instead of going for the victory keep, Koinu is actually just securing resources with these. Kind of a missed opportunity, I think. He has enough for another keep drop, and I really would love to see him just pull 17 to 20 villages to the front line and park a keep right next to this high armory. I think that's a game winning play. This could be a game winning fight. We Supremo's trade out well. Nesta Bees pushing back against this all. They're just charging on in. He says they're tanky enough. You can't even kill him, and he's right. Spearman are going to wrap around. Matisse has to back away. Nesta Bees reaching in here. Another heavy spray coming through, and the Supremo's are at least going to take a few with them, but Spears should be able to clean up now. Nesta Bees will leave an assist on this. So two Nesta Bees left alive at the end of this. Springled. We'll retarget. High Armory is complete, but the tech up came out and possibly the worst time. Matisse needs a defense force. He needs it now. Nesta Bees continue to push in. Second wave coming through. More Springles on the way. Now, this is where Koinu cannot rely on Springles anymore. He needs to transition one way or the other. And now he's going to transition Matisse's army to the afterlife. He's not even reacting this right now. Idle villagers everywhere. We'll try to shift away. Now, this is very important, folks. If he camps here, Matisse, even though he has Springles, has all these shot trick advantages, he can't necessarily use that. Koinu still needs to make the keep drop happen. Because right now, he's just playing long term. So he has two choices. He either techs up himself or he goes for a kill. And Koinu's going to do both. He's got the keep coming. Look at the resource count. Koinu can go for Imperial Age. Spearman in the meantime are going to ensure the anti-siege is not a problem. They dive underneath the TCs. Oh, Mati no, Matisse. We are we doing this? How many archer ranges are we talking about here? Because I've seen this too many times with Strelzi and it doesn't work. So I think he's got five, five archer ranges and he doesn't have a standing army. And he's up against Nesta Bees. So I think, Ru like, Roos, this is really difficult to do. If you mass Strelzi instantly, you need like 10 archer ranges. And this does nothing to do with keeps. Like, I mean, Matisse has got a lot of gold, but that's kind of it, right? Like, wood won't last long this current kind of comp you're going for and the fact you need more infrastructure. Your wood lines also being exposed. And he needs more farms. Like, Matisse has a serious food issue right now. And it's only getting worse. The villagers are moving across a keep drop on the wood line. He's about to trap him. Keep drop in the base is going to prevent the high armory from being full use. Spear wave after spear wave. I mean, Koinu has essentially relegated this to a simplistic spear spam. And Matisse can only defend with villagers. I'm, this is... Is this done? Okay, if this keep goes up, it's done. He'll at least stop that. That's that's one plus side for him. Just one. <laughs> but you see what Koinu is doing. It's the bow constrictor we talked about in full effect. The spearmen. The spearmen are the coup de grace. Matisse. You don't even need more wood right now. You need food. But he has nowhere to set it up. And it's why his production is pathetic. Like, Strelzi count is not good. Between the amount of time it takes and the fact he doesn't have food, he's done. He won't call it just yet, but... Even if you think about, oh, that the eco is kind of comparative, KP. Why you call it that? It's the fact that over a quarter of Matisse's eco has been idle at any given point in the last few minutes. Because it's attacking everyone. <laughs> now, contrary to 
the popular beliefs of peasant rebellions for anyone who's played games like European Universes 4, they ain't always that strong. Especially up against Elite Spearman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the power of the Chinese. Just build spears and castles and call it a game. What a way to open this up. Koinu. Interesting opening with the split TCs into the surge of stone for the keep after keep drop will push Matisse out of this game despite the fact he cracked Imperial first, had no way to keep a standing army, and it means that Koine will already early on find himself on match point. Matisse backed into a corner will go to a tried and true classic from his history of AOE4. It is, of course, the HRE. He will be playing... In the purple. Maybe that's what it was. Koinu, it, it, it wasn't that he just outplayed, but he got purple. Purple OP confirmed if Matisse wins game two. If not, Koinu OP. Koinu has gone for the English on a water hybrid map. Mm, this is actually really bad for Matisse. Oh, man. This is actually really, really bad for Matisse. So this is essentially... What was the other map we had? There was one we had in the Road to Walla Lol that was basically this, but it was Square Ponds that I've forgotten the name of. And I can tell you guys, that map... Was it Kawasan? Yes, yeah, I think you're right, it was Kawasan. So Kawasan, I can tell you, like, Kawasan, English felt almost unbeatable. Um, there were a few sieves. I think the most notable ones were, like, you could go for maybe... I felt like Delhi done okay against them. But English kind of felt like the go-to. And the logic was that if you picked English, you just built racks and built men arms. And HRE players always want to go docks. So you just block them. You just block the docks. You run out of men at arms, you torch down. You possibly even stop them from building up in some cases. Uh, now, the HRE aren't completely helpless. There was a build that kind of worked for them, which is, it was good against seals like the Mongols with spears, is that you mass spears yourself and you brought prelates out to heal. Problem is, these are men at arms. These aren't spears. So it's a little bit harder to dent them. And a bit easy to punish. And of course, you know, English aren't even going to try to opt for spears. They don't have the option until Fuel Age. It's kind of a crazy matchup, right? On one side, you have heavily armored, but you don't have spears in Dark Age. On the other side, you have spears, but you don't have heavily armored until Feudal. <laughs> they, kind of, they kind of clash. But with these men at arms coming out and the scout as well, I mean, this dock is going to go down before Matisse will get a tech up. Because you have to remember, whenever you go for, for dock plays into fishing boats, you're delaying your Feudal timing. And if you can't get your Feudal timing, you don't have a unit to protect your docks with. And even if Matisse tried to do it now, like, yeah, he's, so I was about to say, even if he tries to do this now, he's building racks. This is going to delay him Keep even going. further. He has to build the spears, first of all. Needs more people on spears. He's, yeah. uh, wood, rather. His food isn't looking great either. If Matisse builds double the men at arms, he can make this work. I think one big issue that people kind of sleep on is the fact that actually pulling away with the prelate is much more difficult now than it used to be. Because the, the infantry, with the changes to charges they made a few patches back, they charge, they begin charging at a short range, but they charge for a lot longer. Which means that the men at arms can bum rush the prelate. And usually H3 players don't want to build more than one prelate, so you will just lose him over time. And the other issue is if you do bring this prelate to help heal, he's not actually buffing your economy at all. So you're not even HRE anymore. Ah, I don't know. That's a problematic one. I think, like, if Matisse had done this opening different where he preps Spearman ahead of time, he can somewhat buffer this, right? He can weather the storm. But now he has to wait until he's got five or six Spearmen because you can see what happens if he takes one in. Like, half their HP pool gets taken out. Well, Doc's about to be set fire too, so he more or less could just turn around and chase the Spears now. Village is being pulled. It, uh, Matisse... This is not good enough. You just lose the villagers. Yep. Runs them away. Spinbing, he turned on around as well. And Koinu just on point with the micro. So Matisse will not have the dock anymore. He can maybe at least guarantee two more drop-offs like this, but... I'm starting to think Matisse didn't expect more than four men-at-arms. Genuinely, I think we could be up to like six and Koinu could still feel comfortable in this game. Because now Koinu will just move on to the docks himself. It will be five men at arms. There's be enough to patrol the base, keep your opponent at bay. And I wouldn't even be surprised if he moves on the gold vein now. Like, actually, the gold vein's kind of free here. Wow. This is vicious. And yes, I, I agree. I like the docks burn a little uh, more reasonable time. They used to have 2,000 HP, Rex. Right? I think they tweaked it down a little bit again. I'm glad. I think 2,000 HP was too much. 1750 feels fair. 
Like, this was a big investment for Coindo. Anyone who says this is cheesy or ridiculous, keep in mind what he invested to do this. You can see the number, right? He spent 600 resources. He spent a tech up for this play. The problem is Matisse didn't prep the counter ahead of time. Like, he was very late. He built the docks and he built three fishing boats before he built a racks. So the way this is played out isn't simply, ah, men at arms OP. Like, you can maybe, I, I think there's a fair debate. MAA can be a bit ridiculous at times. This is more in the fact that Matisse was greedy. Very greedy. Men at arms. I'm going to be forced to clash here. This is the area where Coiny probably doesn't want to fight because this is what happens. Like, the spin will peel back and get healed underneath the TC. So, Coiny, he delayed the gold gathering, which is great because now it, it hampers Matisse's timing. Notice he's got belly and gold. Your goal now is just to survive. Just back away, back away, back away. And then when you're really far out of range, you can fight the spears. You can even potentially turn on the Prelot. But you need to scout this first. What a play out by Matisse. He snuck another dock. Heavy damage under Koinu as well. I, I think Koinu is just going to walk away from this feeling comfortable with what he's done. The problem is Koinu, his scout is in the wrong location. He's now going to check for it again. He'll get late confirmation that Matisse did go back underwater. And folks, the reason this is important is Matisse should be able to tech up ahead of Koinu. So he'll get his first archer boat out before the English do. Koinu might need to throw these men at arms away to defend this. The spears are in again. Yeah, Koine, I think Koine realizes what's happened here. He thought he was going to go for the Norman dock. Instead, he went back on the same leg, and now he gets the bad news. A little bit too late to do anything about it, though. Arkin Chapel now being built up. Cool thing about the spawn here for Matisse is if he does get forced off the water, he does at least have backup on deer. Swinging to back up, the men at arms are done doing that. They're going to fight instead. This, this okay, Matisse committing to this fight is pretty bad because there's still a realm in existence where you could get decent burn damage done to the dock on the other side. So I'm glad he backs up. Like Matisse's job is to be kind of a looming threat, not throw away his army. So that being said, how many four fishing boats now? Tech up soon to come out. Villager is in a state of perma repair. It seems the men at arms are now in the way, but this timing. I, He's not going to get enough damage done before the first archer ship comes out. What Koinu probably could do is burn half the dock's HP, which sets up for a spring will kill. Let's see how it goes. We're probably about 15 seconds away from the tech up. Then, of course, you're going to need another 25 to get the boat out. The biggest value here is you kill a villager. If you can clap him. <laughs> Seriously, sometimes this looks so trivial. It's like you won't even get the villager in the end, though. Meanwhile, north side, Spears are still pushing in. Now, remember, Koinu has not started his tech up yet. And now look what he does. 13 people rushing this up. He realizes how far behind he is in tech up now. Men at Arms knows the reinvestment. He hasn't stopped here. Interesting play coming out from Koinu. But realistically, if he plays land aggression, he can still do some serious damage to Matisse. Even if Matisse has the edge on water to begin with. And we are going to get the deer player I was talking about. Like it, it, Matisse needs everything he can get right now. He needs a bigger army, right? He, he's building the naval army, which makes sense, but he also needs a land army. Koinu. Quite troublesome, this. When you go this many fishing boats, seven. Oy, oy, oy. He is at least going to build the Sprawl ship first. This is a good side. See, Matisse, usually you want to do a Sprawl to opening, but he wanted to try and punish the fishing, which is why he went for an archer ship. So he has kind of weakened his opening hand with this choice, which means that Koinu actually still has a way of playing water here. It's pretty dangerous, actually, the way Matisse opened this. Still, the lead seems big enough that you, you feel like you're justified in making this play. So the first Hulk is going to come out, so we'll immediately target onto the archer ships. Koini probably kills two of these fishing boats. Maybe even three, actually, if he keeps up the pressure. Boom ship coming in. Interesting choice quite early on, but he's up against a Springle ship. And, or beeline straight for it. So maximum damage done. Good strike there by Matisse. But very early play. And now the fishing boats. Oh, no. He just got outplayed. Matisse, we see this so often out of Roost players. They jump the gun and build boom ships when there's not enough value extracted from it. He did not even kill the one Hulk, and he spent quite a lot on that. 
Remember, Spring Ships, you can see they're 320. Demo Ships are 160. Usually you build demo ships when there's like, I get mode two and kill three sprinkle ships. That's when it feels like a good investment. Maybe more than that possible. But in this situation, I, I think Matisse jumped the gun. Koinu has to be very comfortable with this now. Okay, a, a circle jerking game of healing, but the more important clash is on land right now. Matisse, he's being idled on the wood line. This is important. The Arcan is what's boosting him, keeping this right now, but every villager going down, it hits you hard. You're essentially losing 1.4 villagers. There's another one there. Billy's even have to commit as Lombos are now starting to harass onto him. Just a, a brilliant read here by Koinu. Don't get bogged down in the water. He has the winning comp for land, and Matisse not easily getting into the counter. He's at least finally building the horseman. This raid has done a lot of damage, though. Like these men at arms, although they'll eventually be cleaned up, they find their value. Now, he might be able to pivot that into a bit more control on the waterfront. Fishing boats. Mostly being sacrificed. Koinu now playing full priority into military on the waterfront side. He's going to bring out second dock. And Matisse, because he got bogged down in this. Oh, wow. He, he actually might not know that he's about to be outmassed. Better get the bad news, though. Hard ship's gone. And this is where the edge is clearly with Koinu. Notice that Matisse did not bring his boats to repair at all, so he will back away, but Sprinkle Ships will give quick pursuit. That's free Sprinkles now. You can just get Blitz down. I think you realize the mistake as well. Matisse, if he had a second dock, he could compete with this, but now you have this issue where your funnel point isn't your resource gathering, it's your production. You don't have enough docks to fight anymore. You've lost water. He has at least got a backup plan. It looks like Matisse did play north side, but that now means Koinu has full control of the south. Feels like at this stage, actually, any bigger investment is just a waste. He's going for a boom ship play, though, and uh, I'm hesitant to say it's going to get much value. Koinu will throw away his demo ship. Pretty wasteful there. Uh, wasteful on both sides. Somehow Koinu still ends up losing a boat from that, though. Absurd. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird one coming out here. But he's still playing for the boom ships. Well, Sprinkles can siege this down fairly quick. Nice spread as well from Koinu. Just needs to be quick to react. If you want to check back every 15 seconds or so. <sighs> Details like that could slowly whittle him down. Other side, we are going to see a dock attempt to be built up here. Archer ship is going to prevent that though. So Matisse will keep the northern pond to himself. Land, however, is a bigger problem. Koinu, if he reinvests into Lombos and some Spears, he could push right into Matisse's economy again. Remember, folks, Matisse had to rebuild from scratch on this north side with his dock. He's lost all of his investment on, the, on this pond. Also not this raid in, but no, no, I don't think you're that threatening, buddy. They'll get one, but the villagers should be able to take him out, so Horseman's gone. The end of that, though, look, look at the difference. Two eco units compared to nine taken out. And remember, everyone for the HRE lost is, is more crippling. Looking at the way this, like, I think a lot of this game really was dictated by the fact that Matisse, I don't know if he just didn't expect the, the men arms play. I think he didn't. What we have to remember is maps like this haven't been played frequently. A map like this that gets played in this way doesn't really exist in the ranked map pool right now. And it was a long time ago that we were talking about Road to Rebel Wallalo, where this was like Kawasan having the same kind of pattern. People would wall in the docks. They knew to expect men at arms. They wouldn't go for early dock plays. When you don't play against it for so long, it's so easy to forget. But it's crazy to think how far ahead Matisse would, would, would or could be in this game if he'd gotten the Spearman out ahead of time. Because then the men at arms investment from Koinu is worthless. But that small detail has allowed Koinu to now propel back into this fully. And Come back in a way where, you know, just a few minutes ago, Matisse still looked pretty squared up to take good fights. But now, with both of them having eco sources on water, I genuinely lean very heavily in favor of Koinu because these Lombos can easily extract value and kill off eco. And just look at the spread now. I mean, Matisse, was he going for a TC play? TC and Castle Age. I, this might be too much. He's going Regnitz. But here's the thing. If, if you wrap around, Koinu should suspect something here. Because if you highlight this area, you stay on top of this and you see no gathering, he's either going north side to gather resources or he's decking up. And considering Matisse hasn't built much military, I think Koinu knows. You go now. You go right now. 
Yeah. Good. Fair point around the relics. You're not wrong. The relic spawns are not exactly generous to him. Only one behind his base. The bigger boon is meant to be Matisse being able to get into knights. But remember, Koinu already countered this. He has spears. Matisse, as is so typical of many HRE players, does not have any archers. So no counter to the spears. He has no way of addressing his key concern here. Horsemen are going to be taken out. Probing force as they dive into the TC. We'll get eyes on Koinu. Now saving up for Castlate himself. Matisse, he finally does it. He rushed it up as well. Plenty of people working on that. Not too much out of time. I'm about to say, we're watching that. i got to watch it. Koinu now moving forward, though. He wants the outpost. Remember, Matisse, although he's teched up, he's not out of the woodworks yet. He has at least got food on water side. He's blocked from gold. Oh, my. He's completely blocked from gold. Matisse could just lose this game based off this detail. Knights are great, but you need the gold. He's going to be forced to probably marketplace trade for them. And that's only going to get you so far. That'll maybe get you four or five knights, but you're still up against Spears. You're going to be up against the Castle Age English soon. King's Pass being rushed up now by Koinu. 22 working on it. Wolves also going up, so fully aware that the initial raids could be coming. If he just keeps patrolling between these two gold veins, Matisse has to drain himself dry with worse and worse trades. Like th This could simply decide the game. And also, because he patrols between these gold veins, he blocks the, the safe relic that you could gather. It looks like Matisse did actually sneak one away, so he took one from the center. That'll be all he gets, though. Koinu will look to protect the rest of these. First Knights are being dispatched towards the English base. Koinu has caught up, now in Castle Age. Two TC versus one. And another detail is very important here. Matisse is not boosting his economy. The Prelate buff does not exist right now. He sent that lad out to pick up a relic, and also there's nothing to really buff here because Koinu is a buffer to any gathering in this area. Looks like the knights have been spotted. So, Koinu will need to knee jerk react. Probably wants to get more Raxes to play with here. Actually, playing into knights himself. A logical play when you consider that you can see Matisse has no gold. Remember, Koinu scouted this entire map. He is fully aware of where the gold is and where Matisse could not be right now. He has got a scouting position, but it looks... Wow, okay. Koinu didn't want to keep blocking the gold. He actually pulled the entire army back. A very surprising choice here. Seems he was super paranoid about the raids from the Knights, but I think he just gave Matisse a game because of this. Like, make no mistake about it, folks. Matisse should not be here. That This area should have been completely quarantined from him. He had no counter to the Lombo Spears. We do have to remember that we, unlike Koinu, can see everything. And we can see that Matisse had no way of dealing with this. But from Koinu's perspective, it's a possibility that he thinks there's archers coming. And maybe there's a few more men at arms around. And that would be enough to beat that group of raiders. But... From my perspective, this seems more like an, a panic overreaction to me. I think Koinu was just worried about night raids. And, of course, the, the issue with like night raids is it's kind of like watching a, a crack in a dam, right? Like, the more that it gets through, the, the more it bursts. It's like once these first few nights get through and they cause anarchy, all of a sudden, you know, you're reacting to them, a second wave comes in. So it's almost like Koinu wanted to get rid of these nights so that he doesn't have to rush around his base with groups. He just wants to wipe these guys out and then head straight down the center. And in fairness, the military pop cap does support that. Does mean Matisse maybe gets an opportunity in one flashy fight at least. <laughs> we'll lose the knight though. So it went the right, wrong way around. Pesky bloody wood line. So this guy will never stop off to kill anyone anymore. He, he's not got a chance. More important details going to be in the center. Quite healthy army for Koinu, ready to go in, Matisse. Wait, is Matisse... What? Oh my god, Matisse is trying to boom. He's still trying to boom. He's trying to... He's going Imperial Age. Okay. I don't know if you have enough food. Okay, he's maybe got enough deep water fish to get away with this. His land economy is complete dog water, though. I... I think this is too greed. This is way too much greed. Greed, like, this, like you, you greed, we Assassin's Creed. That's the rule. Koinu can go. Once he sees that tech up, he won't hesitate either. Knights are amassing. 
About to hit double digits for the English. Matisse barely has any knights to his name. His food is looking pathetic at this stage. And what do you gather with all these extra villagers? Wood, and that's it. I need to remind people, this this is not really HRE still. Like, the prelates are sort of helping, but not that much of his economy is buffed. And he's still open. He, honestly, he's open as a two-year-old's crown book. It's not hard to read. It's not hard to blitz through quickly either. He has no walls. He has nothing to hide behind. No keep, nothing. He's now playing against knights. He has no spears. He is... What? He's building a carrot. What? Get me out. Is that a misclick? Is he playing Colombo? Is he trying? Is he playing Colombo? Is he trying to discover the new world here? What's going on? That's 600 resources you're not using to defend your base. And son, you're going to pay a high price for that. He's like, I can't win on land against the English. And buddy, I wouldn't try and win at sea against the English either. We've got quite a good history at doing that. Royal Britannia will kick your bloody balls in. And there's, there's nothing this is going to do. It's not hitting anything. Matisse, I don't like to, to point this out to other people, but you seem to have a, a, a size issue. You're not quite adequate here, son. You can kill Pumba and that's about it. You can kill a wolf, but that's about it. Oh my, he's just done. Villager massacre on the east side. Nothing happening in the base. There are no forts going through Matisse's mind anymore. The only thing going through his head are sword spears and arrows being fired at him. What a way for this to swing around. I mean, the character literally, like, it's not the only detail that matters here. Matisse, naked imped. Which, yes, that is as disgusting as it sounds, whether it's an imp, like the creature that's naked, or doing it in a game like this. Either way, it's something you never want to see. And because of this detail, Matisse is clearly going to be eviscerated by Koinu. Eco count is a 3x lead for the English. Army count doubled up over the HRE. And Matisse is bent over a barrel being spanked constantly by the English army. I tell you what, dig a mo out of this map, take to the high seas and find a better land because this one, this one is not yours, Matisse. This one has been fully colonized by the English. I mean, he hasn't called it, but I think he's about to. The amount of idle eco. At least they can't get the docks, folks. At least they can. Well, he's not defending the docks, but they don't want it anyway. What a game. What a way for this to play out. Koinu with a relentless aggression. Matisse, after he defeated a player for this level of greed, he gets tripped up by it as well. Koinu will be the winner of the final Warchief Club of 2022.